Hi there. I'm Sanjeev Kohli. I'm a writer and an actor and also make my own shirts. I want to read a story to you. Okay, it's from this book, which is called Dragons at Crumbling Castle by the very brilliant Terry Pratchett. And this story is called Edwo, the Boring Knight. Once upon a time, there was a king who had three sons. Kings generally do. And the youngest one, instead of being good and kind and brave, was worse than you could hope to meet in a month of Mondays. His two older brothers were, were quite nice in a rather ordinary way, but he was a real terror. His name was Edwo. One day the king said to his prime minister, I think it's time the lads were sent out to seek their fortune. This was the custom in the land. The idea was to find some rich princesses. Jolly good idea, said the Prime Minister. I suggest you send Edwo to the moon or the, or the bottom of the sea. The king scratched his head. Well, that's not very nice, he said. What's wrong with him? He's a quiet lad and doesn't mix with catapults and such. He's such a know-all, exclaimed the Prime Minister. And that was the trouble. Throughout the kingdom, which was not very big and mostly consisted of forest and goats, people used to lock their doors when they saw Edwo coming. If they weren't quick enough, he'd soon start off in his boring voice about such interesting facts as the orbit of Neptune or the calorific content of carrots. He was very brainy and might have been quite pleasant, but no one really stayed listening long enough to find out. And so the next day, the king called his sons together and sent them out to seek their fortunes. Edwo, being the youngest, left last. His two brothers had taken the best horses, so he had to make do with a broken down old donkey. He travelled east throughout the forest and soon he started to chat to the donkey. At last, the beast stopped, looked round at him and he said, That is the most boring thing I have ever heard. You are the most boring and uninteresting person I've ever heard. Well, I like that, said Edwo. You're only a donkey. Ah, yes, but I can talk and that's interesting, said the donkey. All I can say is, any rich princess you meet will fall asleep out of boredom. I can't help it, said Edwo. I've just got a boring voice. I'm not mad keen on rich princesses anyway. At that moment, the bushes parted and two big green eyes stared at them. It's a dragon, said the donkey. The dragon slithered out of the bushes and blinked at them, breathing a small cloud of smoke. It looked hungry. Hmm, said Edro. Is it the great green dragon or one of the blue-hued variety? One can tell by the constrictions of the peripatetic tooth holders that it's about a hundred years of age, but... He went on and on and on in his boring voice, and the dragon went to sleep. The donkey prodded it with his nose. It's bored stiff, he said. How amazing. They hurried on before it woke up again. Further west, the forest became more open with lots of little streams and hidden meadows. The donkey, whose name was Pig Squeak, passed the time by singing comic songs in what wasn't a bad singing voice for a donkey. His favourite, however, began, Old Mitt What Not Had A Farm, At sunset, they came to a crumbling stone tower right on the edge of the forest. There was a brass black on the broken door which read, F. Argolitely, wizard. All kinds of spells, enchantments, potions. Patronised by royalty. Also, haircuts, shoes cleaned very cheap, teeth extracted while you wait. Oh, said Edward, that kind of wizard. He doesn't say anything about bed and breakfast. He raised the heavy iron knocker, and after a while, the door was opened by a small bear. It was wearing an apron. The wizard's in conference, it growled. Uh, actually, we, we were wondering if we could stay here tonight, quavered Edwo. Well, that's different, said the bear. I have to be very careful, you know. So many people are after here for money. Come in, my name is Toodle. He showed them inside and added, It's a bit of luck you arriving because Mr. Golightly is in a spot of bother. 
Edo could hear muffled shouts coming from the next room. What sort of horrible trouble could the wizard get into? He wondered. He pushed open the door. At first he saw nothing in the wizard's room except a small bottle standing on the table. Then he saw F.R. Golightly. Inside it, and only ten centimetres tall. The wizard was very angry and squeaked loudly whilst jumping up and down. One of his spells went wrong and he was trapped, explained Tudo. The bottle is made of pinhops, unbreakable glass, and uh, it doesn't. How strange, said Edwo. Never mind, said Pig Squeak the donkey. Edwo here is very clever. Say a few words, lad. So Edwo tried his most boring voice and talked for two minutes about newts. Toodle went to sleep standing up and the bottle cracked, hence proving that unbreakable is not the same as unborable, and F.R. Golightly staggered out. He soon grew back to his normal size and he shook Edwo by the hand. Oh, I'm so happy I'll give you two and a half wishes, he beamed. Only two and a half? said Pig Squeak. I'll look after Edward's business and rest, you know, and it should be three wishes. It's the cost of living, said the wizard sadly. I can't afford more than two and a half, but I'll throw in bed and breakfast tonight and, well, a three and a half league boot? He explained that a three and a half league boot was one half of a pair of seven league boots. He'd lost the other one. He had to hop. Early next morning they set off again, and the wizard called after them, If you're seeking your fortune, head for Globo Land. I know where that is, said Pig Squeak. You know a lot for a donkey, said Edwo, admiringly. Yeah, well, I was turned into a donkey by a witch. What were you before then? Actually, I was a frog, admitted Pig Squeak. Before that, I was a toad, and before that, I was a tree, and before that, I was a handsome prince. I always seem to be falling foul of witches. A couple of days later they came, tired and hungry, to the border of Globoland. Edwo and Pig Squeak wandered there all the next day without meeting anyone. I'm hungry, sighed Edwo. I wish I had something to eat. Of course the wizard had given him two and a half wishes. A magical egg and cress sandwich instantly appeared out of nowhere. That, said Pig Squeak, was a waste of a wish. Oh, I don't know, said Edwo with his mouth full. It's not a bad sandwich. Just then they passed a large tree with a notice pinned onto it. It read, Half the kingdom will be given to anyone who can rescue Princess Keja from wicked Baron Semiquaver, who captured her on his birthday. Only bona fide princes need apply. Signed, the king. What's bona fide? asked Edwo. It means genuine, said Pig Squeak. Right-o, then. But I wish I knew where the princess is now. Letters of fire appeared in the air, reading, You could try the tallest tower in the Baron's palace just west of Snowcap Mountain. Edwo dismounted and pulled on the three-and-a-half-league boot that the wizard had given him. You follow me later, he said to Big Squeak, and gave a hop. Of course, the magic boot took him soaring way above the trees, and two hops later he was outside the Baron's palace. There was a wide open plain there, and it was crowded. What happened was that several hundred assorted princes, out seeking their fortunes as they usually had to in those days, had read the notices and come along. They pitched tents and lit fires. Some of them were doing their washing in a stream. Some were having a sing-song. There was a terrific din. Most of the princes seemed to be about seven foot tall and much handsomer than Edwo. Up came a prince holding a notebook. He asked Edward's name and he wrote it down impatiently. You are 76th on the list, he explained. Just then a stretcher party hurried out of the Baron's palace, carrying a very dazed prince. A big man with a megaphone appeared on the battlement and shouted, Next! The Baron's fought 34 people so far this morning, said the prince. He'd be ready for you around lunchtime. Oh dear, said Edwo, as he watched another prince gallop over the drawbridge on a white charger. The prince shrugged. Even half a kingdom is hard to come by these days, he explained. <clears throat> right up until lunchtime, wicked Baron Semiquaver took on 
one by one, the princes who had come to rescue the princess. Pretty soon, the field outside the castle was littered with princes bandaging one another's wounds and complaining. After lunch, Edward went hopping into the castle in his three and a half league boots, holding a battered sword borrowed from one of the other princes. The drawbridge creaked up behind him. He thought he was in a very gloomy courtyard. A door opened and evil Baron Semiqueva strode out wearing black armour and eating a chicken leg in a very sinister fashion. He held the club in one big hand, but the effect was rather spoiled because he still had his napkin around his neck. Fee, fi, fo, fum, he said. Come on then, I haven't got all day. What rotten weedy princes they be they days. Edward took a hop towards him, and of course the magic boot brought him right up to the Baron. He swung the sword at the armour. It just broke, and the Baron laughed most objectionably. <laughs> Edward backed away and turned and ran up some stairs. He scrambled through a maze of dusty rooms, hearing the Baron lumbering along behind him. Strange suits of armour stood against the wall, and there were lots of dusty pictures of dignified ancestors. Soon he reached a big barred door where the princess was looking out between the bars. If you're the Princess Kaja, I've come to rescue you, he, he gasped. Excuse me, ma'am, I've got a bit of a job on just in a minute. Then he remembered he still had half a wish left. As the Baron thundered up, waving the club, he wondered frantically how to make half a wish. Should he wish for success in battle? A glorious sword? Suddenly the most boring idea in the world came to him. He swallowed hard Ooh. and he said, I wish that the floor was covered in marbles. Now since it was really only a half wish, the floor was only half covered. Even so, there were enough marbles for the Baron to go skidding and slipping along the corridor until he hit a wall with a bang that shook dust from the ceiling. Ha! Beaten by marbles. Edward dashed up and took a large bunch of keys from the Baron's belt. After a few false tries, he found one which opened the princess's cell. How do we better do something with him? She said, pointing to the Baron. He was beginning to wake up. What's that behind that window? said Edward, pointing. The moat, I think, said Princess Kasia. It was rather an effort, but a few minutes later they dropped the Baron into the moat, which was mainly mud. Later that day, the king arrived and, after trying unsuccessfully to wriggle out of it, presented Edwo with half his kingdom as he had promised. The baron was sent into exile, and the first thing Edwo did was throw a large party in his palace for all the princes the baron had fought. In the middle of the party, by which time the princess and most of the princes had fallen asleep after listening to Edwo, Pig Squeak the donkey turned up. He'd gone back first, though, to have a word with the wizard Galitely and persuaded him to turn him back into a handsome prince. Except that he was, frankly, not very handsome. He looked much better as a donkey, Edward thought. Anyway, Edward made him a knight and gave him a large estate. Even Golightly himself had been invited, and he was so pleased that he gave everyone who was still awake one-fifth of a wish each. Then Edward and Keja got married because that was part of the contract. Princess Kasia turned out to be almost as boring as Edwo. She could talk the hind legs off a donkey when she got going. So lucky for Pig Squeak that he was now a knight, as he was rather fond of his legs. They didn't live completely happily ever after. There was the time that Edwo walked mud all over the palace carpets, and that time the roof leaked. But they were at least as happy as they wanted to be. And why not, after all? Thank you.